Hi, I'm Mitch, and in this free CAD video, I'm going to introduce the second group of joints in the assembly workbench. And I've taken to calling these the primary joints, these the secondary constraints, and these the advanced mates. And those are my semantics because I think of a constraint as something that constrains a single type of motion, whereas a joint might be made up of one or more constraints to produce a more realistic range of motion. So most of the time I think you're going to start by producing one of these primary joints and then once in a while it won't produce quite the motion that you would like to and so you might need to add a secondary constraint on top of that. So let's start with these same two parts that I used in my video on the primary joints. I'm gonna immediately ignore the advice I just gave you and start by and start by creating a distance joint. I'll select this face. And this face. And make a distance joint. And that distance joint fixes the distance between the selected objects. It basically puts them on the same plane. So you can see that these two uh, that these two faces are on the same plane. Now I can grab this and move it around and it sure looks like this is not on the same plane as that anymore. But if we come back and look at that same face we can see that yes indeed those red planes are on the same plane and it just and this is really just an issue of a, trying to project a 3D perspective onto a one uh, on a flat screen so I don't actually want this joint but I am not going to press control Z I'm not going to press undo I'm not going to come up and to edit and hit undo because we know from our, my previous video that that will create the dreaded access violation. Instead I will either hit cancel or I'll press OK and then click on the distance joint and delete it. And now we can zoom back in on our parts, move them apart, and the next thing I'll do is a parallel joint. I'm going to actually select two edges to make parallel to each other. We'll just make these two and press the parallel joint and at first it looks as though nothing has happened because these two edges were already parallel and you can see that I can move this all around in this space and as long as those two lines stay parallel part of the reason I picked two edges is because we do align the z-axis and we always know that the z-axis of an edge is along that edge so it's more intuitive and I'm gonna press OK and as I've shown before, you can realign this uh, non-grounded piece. And now those two edges most certainly are not parallel. And so it looks like I've broken the constraint. And, and FreeCAD will allow me to do that. But when I come back to fix assembly, now it has made them parallel again. Uh, I can achieve the same result. Let's see if I go in this direction. Those are definitely not parallel. But if I grab the part and try to move it, it will snap back to that parallel constraint. And you can also see that there were a few different ways that FreeCAD had to solve this constraint. And we're going to make that even more obvious using this perpendicular joint. So I'm going to select the perp. Oopsie cancel that. I'm going to select this face, nope, this face, and this face, and I'm going to make those perpendicular. And for some reason, the perpendicular joint uh, isn't behaving the way I would like it to behave. You can see it doesn't look like it made the joint there, but if I hit OK, now it snaps to a perpendicular constraint. Now again, if I grab the body and I rotate it, 
And if I rotate it far enough, let's say just a little bit past 45 degrees, and now I try to move it, now it solves the perpendicular joint in that direction. So there's another reason why I wouldn't necessarily start with these, is because the FreeCAD has a lot of freedom to solve a single constraint in multiple different ways, and so it's not terribly intuitive how it's going to do that. Okay, so let's delete that perpendicular constraint. And I'm going to rotate my body uh, back a, closer to the way I had it. There we go. And now I'm going to take the advice that I gave you. I'm going to start with a primary joint, and then I'll add one of these secondary constraints on top of it. So I'm going to choose this edge and this edge and I will make a revolute joint out of those and let's switch it and so now we can see that the, those those edges revolve about each other so now let's say instead of having that free to revolve I would like to fix that at a 45 degree angle I can come down here and just set the minimum at 45 degrees and the maximum at 45 degrees. And now we can see it doesn't move beyond that 45 degree angle. So I don't really need any of my secondary constraints for this, but another way I can do this is to accept my revolute joint with no minimum angle or maximum, and then I could come in and choose maybe this edge and that edge and add a angle joint to them. And the angle is set to zero degrees for now, but if we make it 45 degrees, now they don't move. So that's a second way we can do it. Now let's say instead of a 45 degree angle between those, I'd like to have them perpendicular. So I can set that to 90 degrees. And they don't move. But I could also delete that. These move. And I could achieve that same thing by taking those two edges and making that a perpendicular joint. cancel that. I could also choose maybe oopsie this edge and that edge and set those parallel and that works. Cancel that and the last way I could achieve that is select this edge and Oofed that edge and make a distance joint where the distance is zero. So those are multiple ways of getting to the same thing and hopefully that kind of shows you how all of these work. I hope this was helpful.